G'day, so today we're going to show you uh, what a fly agaric looks like and we're actually going to uh, cook some up and I'm going to show you how you can turn these toxic mushrooms into something not just edible but very desirable. So here's a young one and here's an aging one and they're probably only two or three days uh, apart in age but they're very different. So familiarizing yourself with your mushrooms and the different stages uh, they are in life will help you uh, as a forager. That's what a good mushroom looks like. Um, just before I start I want you all to guarantee uh, us, me, right now, that you're not going to share this information lightly and that you're going to, if you share this post on social media, um, to not just say, hey, fly garricks are edible because people may not go through this recipe and they might just see that in a post feed and go, oh, wow, those mushrooms are edible. And then you could get your friends and people in your network quite sick. So there's all the variations of the, of the cap. This is the same mushroom. So different stages. You can see the, the white dots in this one has completely disappeared um, virtually apart from three or four uh, and becoming quite orange. Um, they can be confused for saffron milk caps um, to the novice forager. You can see they're really quite different mushrooms. When you're foraging, just a, a quick point on foraging, um, leave all the dirt in the, in the forest or in the field. Um, and the best way to do that is to have a mushroom brush room like this. Um, there's many different types and always cut the stipe off nice and cleanly rather than tear the mushroom out which will destroy uh, or damage the mycelium. So I'm just going to uh, basically get these ready to start preparing for food. Once again I stress these are poisonous mushrooms if you don't follow this recipe. I usually take most of the stipe off, just clean the stipes off. So you can see the great diversity of caps. These, the hoods here are, are called the caps. These are the gills, the stipe and the cap. Okay you can see under here the veil is still left on this one. So I'm just going to remove that. Um, the very first, the very first thing you do, apart from clean off any excess dirt that may have come home in your basket, and of course you, you never use water to clean mushrooms; it will just turn them really mushy. So, really, just cut them into finger thin slices okay. we're going to go inside now and uh, cook them up I'll show you the cooking process which is very specific and you need to agree that you're going to do this if you eat these mushrooms so let's go so as you can see here I've got three pots uh, that I boiled earlier got on the stove earlier I started with the big pot first because these mushrooms will reduce down quite a lot and then I've got two uh, smaller pots. So we're going to cook the mushrooms boil for 10 minutes in each of the pots and on the last 10 minute pot uh, we're going to have a, a variation on the, on, the, on the recipe or the method. Okay, so I'm going to put these in. The reason we're sharing this now is that this is a time to build the home economies. And every food, Meg and I over the last 12 years, have not discounted any foods. We've found out literally hundreds and hundreds of feral species that are edible, not only edible, but highly medicinal and beneficial to a home economy. 
that fly agarics or Amanita muscaria mushrooms are very common, particularly at this time of year. So a really great source of protein if you can convert them into edible food and take the toxins out of them. So you need to be really careful and that's why we're stressing throughout this video, please follow this step-by-step -step, um, process to convert this poisonous mushroom into edible, desirable food. You can see the red colour there. That's the water we want to discard. And all the water that we discard goes through our charcoal grey water system and into the garden. Okay, so that's 10 minutes uh, of the first boil. You can see how pale the mushrooms are. It's leached out a lot of the red. Okay. So I'm just gonna go and feed that to the reindeers. <laughs> So it's a good idea to just set uh, a, a, an alarm or a clock for 10 minutes just so that you absolutely know that it's had a minimum of 10 minutes. You can boil for longer of course. Okay we're ready for the last boil. So we're going to do something slightly different here. After we've put um, the mushrooms which are really white out now or creamed out, no very little red colour at all. So we're going to just transfer those into the final of the three pots. So the only variation in the three boiling stages is I'm going to add some of Meg's stinging nettle vinegar. Uh, you can use any vinegar you like. Vinegar will help draw out any of the last remaining toxins. So just a, a, a generous splash. Give them a stir, bring this fire back up to boil and boil them for another 10 minutes. Okay, so the fly agarics have had three steeps, 10 minutes each in fresh water. And with the last pot, we've put the uh, vinegar um, splash of vinegar in just to draw out any last uh, toxins. I'm just going to strain this last one into the sink. So and see how fish like they are. Mm. Of course mushrooms have a closer DNA to animals than they do to plants and when you eat this you can really the, the, the meat-like texture is really quite remarkable. And like fish, they have gills. That's right, like fish, they have gills. And in fact, and in fact plants and animals derive from mushrooms. Um, so, what I need to do first is some of Meg's homemade uh, ghee into the pot, onto the, to the uh, pan made from local raw cow's milk and I'll just let that melt in. You can of course use coconut oil or butter or tallow, um, olive oil, coconut oil etc. All right and now I'm going to fry these. on a very high, and, and get the pan very hot, you want these to become extremely crisp. So this is going to take another 10 minutes. So at the end of this cook, it's going to have about 40 minutes of these mushrooms being cooked. So here is the uh, finished plate. So this is going to accompany our artist's family rice bowl tonight. What I normally do uh, when I've finished is just drizzle some lemon juice um, and a pinch of salt and they're ready to go. Bon appetit. Mm. So good. <laughs>